G'day cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. And welcome to today's breakdown of the Bluey Season 1 episode Takeaway. If grown ups go from babies and only grown ups have babies, who had the first baby? This was one of my favourite episodes from season one. I just loved it, especially the music and just, I guess, the anxiety it gave me. Give me Are you finished yet, Bingo? Almost. <laughs> it's really strange, but we're going to break it all down, all the Easter eggs, hidden little details that maybe you just didn't know anything about. If you are new to my channel, though, hi and welcome. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well as that bell for notifications so you know whenever I release any other Bluey content. And the like button as well, of course, if you love Bluey as much as I do. So let's just get into today's breakdown of the episode Takeaway. This episode of Bluey is called Takeaway. Now, the first thing I really want to talk about is the actual Takeaway location itself and the Chinese Takeaway shop, which is called the Golden Crown. The kanji in the show translates into Golden Crown, and this is an actual real live location in Brisbane, Australia. Brisbane, of course, is where Bluey is set, and this Chinese Takeaway called the Golden Crown is actually in Bluey. Louis neighborhood in real life. It's in the Ashgrove neighborhood and it was an iconic part actually of that neighborhood. It was quite famous for a couple of people who used to visit it. But something really cool is if you look even on Google Maps you can see it. You can see it looks very similar to what they did in the show and even like the sort of little mini strip mall that it's set on is actually just across the street from where it is in real life. So you can tell that the animators probably went there and decided to sort of place that in front of it or incorporate it in together because that's a really common kind of scenery that you see in Brisbane a lot with little shops like that. Some other really cool characteristics though as well is the phone number of the takeaway store. Now, as we see in real life, it does also start with 33, just like it does in Bluey. 33 is the area code for that area. However, obviously in the show Bluey, when they released this episode, this Chinese takeaway store was still open and they didn't want to dox it and put the real number on it. So what they did instead was they used the hex color code hack that Ludo Studios do quite often in Bluey. So what they did instead is they started it with 33 and then the rest of the numbers together as the hex color code is the dark purple that we see along the roof of the takeaway store. This has popped up multiple times in Bluey in the episode Fruit Bat, especially the registration number for the boat with the game they're playing is just the hex color code for that color that they used. So they also do it with 419 in the blue healer's number plate. I did a whole video about that, but it means blue and then healer. They do it for Jack's car. It, pops up a lot. So a lot of the time, if I can't figure out a number, I check the hex color code number and usually that links up with what's going on in the scene. But a very sad detail though, I think as well about this location is the fact that this Chinese restaurant does not exist in Australia anymore. It actually closed down last year, which is really sad, but I guess it will be forever immortalized in Bluey. The next little details though, I think that would be pretty cool to mention is like the TV references to this episode. So the first one being Seinfeld, of course, there is a classic Seinfeld episode where they go to a Chinese restaurant and they're constantly being told five more minutes, five more minutes. And again, in this episode of Bluey, Bandit is twice or constantly. We could say being told five more minutes for those spring rolls. Five more minutes, kids. <laughs> Sorry, your spring rolls will be five more minutes. So definitely a little TV Seinfeld reference there. We also can possibly see a future Bluey reference with the episode Rain. So a few people on Reddit think that the little like building that Bluey brings out in the episode Rain is actually the toy takeaway set, which is like an Inception thing because in real life, yeah, this episode was turned into a toy. You can actually buy the takeaway toy in real life and people think that that's the toy that they use in rain. I initially thought it was the healer house. I thought it looked more like that, but let me know in the comment section down below what you think. We do of course though have another future Bluey reference where in the episode pool, we do see Chili using these takeaway menus that the girls are playing with at the start of this episode as a fan to fan herself down. So I do love how Bluey always sort of incorporates different things from different episodes, even though it doesn't really go on like a linear timeline. The next thing I wanna point out though is the animation errors. These are always really fun to try and find if there are any at all. But this episode, we did have a few. The first one that we see is with the actual takeaway food itself. So when the fried rice and all that falls onto the ground, it's in the front of the chair. But a little bit later on, we see it flip into underneath the table. The second animation error is of course Bandit. His tummy changes color as we see him going in and out of the store. The third animation error is Bluey's nose. This one seemed to be like the most obvious one to me but as Bandit walks like in front of her her nose glitches and it sort of shrinks and then goes back. And then the other one is the actual takeaway lady herself. She comes out she is a husky and she has like the gray at the top of her head but when she's inside
inside the store, it's just pure white. The gray is actually missing. And we do know that it's meant to be the same lady as well. And this takeaway lady is voiced by the lovely Jasmine Moody, who is actually a storyboard artist in Bluey herself. And there's actually a really cool blog article about her on the Bluey website. I'll leave a link for it in the description box down below. But it's so fascinating hearing her story of how she got to work on Bluey. And of course she gets to feature as the voice of our lovely takeaway lady. But another really interesting thing as well is that she says that her background character that she is is the what we think is Pom Pom's sister. It's like the older sister Pomeranian with the glasses and it's holding her favorite dessert which looks like to be a matcha ice cream or maybe pistachio ice cream. But I think that's really interesting. Does that mean that all the background artists or people who work on Bluey have their own background character? And if so, I want to know who everyone's is because there's like 130 characters in Bluey. So there, I mean, there's enough for everyone. If I ever get to go to Ludo Studios and talk to them, that would be hands down one of the questions that I will ask them. The next thing I want to talk about is the UK details references. So the first one is just a small one. This episode is episode 14, but for some reason the UK got switched to 22. Don't know why. But something else about the UK in this though is the Peppa Pig reference. So we do see Bandit telling the girls that they have to wait for five minutes. They ask how long it is and he's like, it's an episode of Chutney Chimp. How long is five minutes? Uh, it's one episode of Chutney Chimp. And yes, there is some controversy about this. Is Chutney Chimp different to Chunky Chimp? Yes, they are. Chunky Chimp is the movie. Chutney Chimp is the five minute TV show that is based off Peppa Pig. E P C C Chutney as well as also a very, I guess, famous condiment from England. We use it a lot in Australia as well, but it kind of sort of like links up as well. It's an animal, the alliteration. But also the creator, Joe Brum, used to work in the same building where Peppa Pig was being made. So maybe it was just like a little shout out to that. Something I also really love about Bluey is that sometimes we forget that they're dogs and we just relate to them so much, but they are dogs, and this episode really pushed that home with a lot of little dog jokes. Everything from Bandit telling the girls to stay, to Bingo barking, getting catching a newspaper and putting it in her mouth, Bluey patting her on the hand, saying good girl, but also the no wet dogs in car roar because, you know, wet dogs smell pretty bad, and also that he lets the girls drink out of the tap outside, which, yeah, in real life, normally you would let dogs drink from the tap as well, but not really children. You wouldn't let them do that in real life. Something else, though, that... I guess has become incorporated into many people's real life though is Bushwees. This was the introduction of the Bushwee and yes, in real life you would probably let your dog do a Bushwee anywhere, but children though, maybe not as often or at least not in front of a restaurant maybe, but I've been in that situation before with my child and we have introduced Bushwees when we need to do a Bushwee and I just love it. I thought it was one of like the funniest little things that they added in the show that it has just had such a cultural impact outside of the show. I know a lot of parents who say it's time for a Bushwee, but also I noticed on Reddit some people asking why didn't they just use the toilet and yeah, yeah, Bandit goes in and asks his toilet, they say it's really far away, because it's probably far away in a park, because that style of restaurants where they are, usually in those areas there's only one bathroom, and that's like shared between all those different businesses, they'll have a key to it, but it's only for those businesses to use, because it's a health and safety risk for anyone else to go out the back and walk along the backside where there might be products and things like that that could cause any issues. So that's why there's no toilet inside. It's not a restaurant, it's just a takeaway store. So those little chairs at the front, probably the only chairs in that whole store. You go in, you order, you wait, you go home. Something though I do want to bring up, of course, is the Australian words that are referenced in this episode. We do have a couple little ones. I did mention tap before, but I know over here in America you say faucet or fa faucet, yeah? I can't ever figure out how to say it properly, but we say tap. They say no worries, they say mate, and of course the fortune cookie comes up and Bluey refers to it as a biscuit, because in Australia we call cookies biscuits. But yes, we do call them fortune cookies though. But something really interesting about the fortune cookie proverb that was inside is that, yeah, it is based on a real life proverb as well, and I always love when the show incorporates those kind of things. They did a lot in the episode Ragdoll as well. All of those sayings that Bandit said were actual famous sayings from real life. But I think, like, it really taught a proper lesson, and especially it did to me. It really made me do that whole, like, sometimes you just gotta say yes. Sometimes you just gotta let it all go and just say, you know what, kids, yes. And you'll have a really good time. You'll have fun, you'll make memories, and your stress will decrease significantly. Because let's be honest, the music in this episode was fantastic, but man, does it give you anxiety. Like, it builds you up because you know it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse. And I think all of us who are parents who watch this totally have been in that situation where you're trying to watch one kid and you can't watch the other one and everything is just going to hell in a handbasket. So I totally related to this episode, which is why I want to give it four... Uh, yeah, four and a half out of five long dogs. What would you choose? Cheeky dogs give it out of five. I just think that 
all of that together just made it such a relatable episode to me as a parent. And I loved all of Bingo's questions and the fact that Bandit never answered any of them. What do these words say? No idea, kiddo. And all of his answers were like, uh, mm, mm. And it's just so typical of a four-year-old asking all these questions, trying to find out what's going on in the world. And as a parent being like, I do not have the time to answer this in the right amount of detail that you are probably going to need. So I feel like it was just a real reflection. It was a real parenting episode of like, yeah, we've all been through this. Sometimes you just gotta forget the spring rolls if you wanna get home because you know your kids are hungry. But but sometimes you can also just say yes to having fun and yes to maybe some silly situations and just going for it and enjoying the time. But like I said, let me know what you guys think about this episode in the comment section down below. Is it one of your favorite episodes? I would love to know. But until the next video, I have picked you cheeky dogs out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch and I'll see you all in another video. Mwah! Bye!